get vaccinated. Strengthen your immune system. Follow the protocols. And let us all learn to live with this virus. That is the only way we will defeat it. Prime Minister Andrew Holness's impassioned plea in light of Jamaica being in the throes of a fourth wave of COVID-19 infections. We all must be responsible and play our part to get our country back on track. What are we are full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. A whole in way of celebrating now. <laughs> they said the people, them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people, them free paper, bono, them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panta, collect you know? medal. I'm on top. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2022. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, we have more in this report. On site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre. Why it pre? <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yeah. If you don't know the app, to get the updates then. Today, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, January 17, 2022. A zone of special operations has been announced for the southern sections of Savannah Lamar in Westmoreland. Prime Minister Andrew Holness declared the zone on Sunday during a digital press briefing at Jamaica House. He says the communities include Russia, Darling Street and Dexter Street. I'm aware of the conditions of terror that the people endure. I feel their pain. And I know that the vast majority of residents in those gang-captured communities, whether in central Kingston, Augustown, or South South, are peaceful, law-abiding citizens who simply want to live in peace. Savannah Lamar South is the second Zoso to be declared in 2022, following Parade Gardens in central Kingston on January 9. They join other zones in effect for Denham Town, Norwood, Mount Salem, Greenwich Town and August Town. Westmoreland has seen a sharp and steady increase in violent crimes, with the parish ending 2021 with 128 murders, a 60% increase over 2020. This resulted in the parish having the fourth highest murder rate among all police divisions on the island. The zone encompasses the epicenter of gang activity in this part of Westmoreland and is among the top 10 communities with the highest murders across the country. Particularly poor infrastructure and blight has increased the community's vulnerability and has raised the level of concern on the circumstances of this relatively small but significant community. Meanwhile, 18 of the 20 persons of interest being sought by the police in the Parade Gardens Zone of Special Operations have been interviewed and two remain in custody. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson gave that update during Sunday's virtual press conference at Jamaica House. He says the security forces are also seeing signs of former rivals willing to speak with each other when facilitated by the Joint Command. The Commissioner of Police says the use of heavy intelligence, as well as an adjustment to the force's response, led to the seizure of nine firearms and the arrest of a significant figure in the illegal arms trade in Mountain View. In West Westmoreland, intelligence has led to the arrest of persons within the past few days in the Whitorn area who were wanted for murder and other crimes. At the same time, our gang unit within CTOC has arrested nine members of one gang, four of whom were previously before the court on anti-gang charges. Major General Anderson adds that 26 gang-affiliated children were placed before the courts for violent gun-related crimes and murders in 2021. The JCF is intent on continuing to take strong action to defend every community from intimidation. We don't have days off. And to this end, we will, to the fullest extent, of our capacity, 
continue to use the tools available to us to pursue and apprehend the criminals for as long as and as many times as it takes. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, has received 30,000 US dollars worth of equipment and software to strengthen the health and wellness support for members. The items have been donated by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. They include video cameras, monitors, and relevant software to support the JCF's Enriching Your Health and Wellness initiative, which is being managed by the force's medical services branch. The police commissioner says the items will be used as part of a sensitization and health education exercise to help its members manage stress and prevent non-communicable diseases, NCDs. This uh, today is another, I think, landmark thing in our overall delivery of uh, services to our members so that they can deliver to our country uh, what the country needs. The equipment and software will also be used to record real-life situations impacting the police, provide preventative tips, and allow members to undertake stress self-assessments. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton is urging strict adherence to the infection prevention and control protocols to protect children. The call comes as the Bustamante Hospital for Children records a growing number of admissions for COVID-19. Senior Medical Officer Dr. Michelle Ann Richards Dawson shared that the hospital was seeing the highest number of pediatric cases, including 23 confirmed and two suspected, while they await the results for 24 samples. Ten clinics have had to be cancelled, while hospital staff try to cater to the essential cases. During a visit to the hospital on Friday, Dr. Tufton reiterated the call for more Jamaicans to get vaccinated and practice the COVID safety methods, particularly around children who cannot get vaccinated because of their age. A monitoring and oversight committee will be set up to implement the 54 prioritized recommendations developed by the Jamaica Education Transformation Commission, JETC. The committee members who are to be appointed by the end of the month will be drawn from the JETC and key stakeholders in the education sector. I will, by the end of January, appoint a monitoring and oversight committee drawn from members of the commission and key stakeholders that will be responsible for monitoring and publicly reporting on the progress of implementation of the recommendations. We are serious about this transformation. Prime Minister Andrew Holness was speaking Thursday at the launch of the Reform of the Education in Jamaica 2021 report. He says the Ministry of Education will oversee the implementation and is to submit a detailed execution plan complete with timelines. The Ministry has to be responsible for the implementation. As far as possible, we must use the existing resources within the ministry and where there are capacity gaps, we must build capacity to address those gaps. The 342-page JETC report is a blueprint for the establishment of a comprehensive strategy to improve students' performance and educational productivity across the sector. And finally, the Electoral Office of Jamaica, EOJ, has implemented several strategies in anticipation of electors gathering at its offices to renew expired voter identification, ID cards, and collect their new cards. Deputy Director of Elections with Responsibility for Field Operations, Earl Simpson, outlined the measures during a JIS think tank on Friday. We recognize that some of our offices um, do not have the space to, to, to really take, um, to process the, the number of electors that are coming there. And we have sought to take the distribution to another location in order to lessen the crowd. We have also taken on additional staff within the office to process the electors. Mr. Simpson says the EOJ has also temporarily reassigned staff at its head office to help process the volume of electors and their requests. The EOJ is now making arrangements to restart a program for taking the distribution of the cards and the renewal process closer to electors in their communities. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. remains committed 
to building the resilience of the sector through support in their bid to increase production. The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce was successful this past year in keeping the sectors afloat in order to recover stronger amidst the pandemic. Join us on Tuesday, January 18, right here on this station, as we look back at the Ministry's year in review. On January 10, 2022, the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change was reincorporated into the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. The Portfolio Minister, Pernell Charles Jr., was appointed Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries. But before the change, the MUREC was critical to the state's recovery agenda in 2021. We review the high points next. Housing, urban renewal, environment, and climate change outlines a pathway for the country to thrive in the post-COVID era. Efforts to renew Jamaica took shape in 2021 and the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change provided the roadmap and led that charge. The Housing Agency of Jamaica built solutions at Catherine Estates in St. Catherine and Rhine Park in St. James. The agency also delivered titles to landowners in several parishes. A million dollars was set aside for each member of parliament to address vulnerable housing in constituencies. Housing is the primary determinant of people's financial security and well-being. And while the impacts of climate change are felt in every sphere of our lives, whether directly or indirectly, our housing sector, for obvious reasons, is especially vulnerable. This complemented the Ministry's survey of informal settlements with eight of the island's 14 parishes covered in the year. Ultimately, through this strategic approach, life and property can be preserved, dignity restored, and a sense of community realized. Public-private partnerships in housing continued with the completion of 48 of the 239-unit foreshore estate in St. Andrew. At the Jamaica Mortgage Bank, $180 million was expended to indemnify 150 new undertakings. The redevelopment of downtown Kingston advanced when the amended Urban Renewal Tax Relief Act passed in Parliament. The National Spatial Planning Information Planning Platform was launched to better manage the island's natural land and marine resources. This is a launch of a platform which is a part of the integral thrust for government now to use science and technology, information and data to inform our decisions. Supporting government's use of geographic information systems was the 2021 renewal of its Enterprise License Agreement with Environmental Systems Research Institute, ESRI. The agreement saw 265 entities, including 179 educational institutions, accessing resources. Climate change threatens the very economic base on which we seek to build our country. Jamaica's participation at the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference of the Parties, COP26, led to its selection as part of a 133 million US dollar task force on access to climate finance. The country secured a 1 million US dollar grant from India to build sustainable agriculture facilities benefited from an infrastructure for resilient island states facility to recover from climate crises and accessed 1.1 million US dollars from the Green Climate Fund for its national adaptation plan. This resulted in the launch of the Green Bond Project Market Assessment. The pilot project sought to determine the feasibility of raising funds to finance climate resilience and low carbon development on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. We're sending a very strong signal today to our development partners that Jamaica indeed we are taking charge I dare say of our development and advancement as a country um, and 
we are definitely recognizing, not just in words, the need for climate action. The second phase of the pilot Climate Resilience Adaptation Program and Financing Mechanism got underway in the year. A $244.93 million project, the program built out rainwater harvesting systems and microcheck dams. Jamaica remains resolute in our commitment to sustainably manage our forest resources for the benefit of present and future generations. Close to 800,000 trees were distributed and planted by the Forestry Department under the 3 million trees in three years program. Forestry also kick-started the My Tree Legacy promotion to have Jamaicans planting trees at their alma maters. Members of Parliament were each given 100 trees for planting under the Ministry's Earth Card program. 138 hectares of land were reforested. Ground truthing and monumentation along the boundaries of the Cockpit Country Protective Area was completed. The $240 million Alternative Livelihoods Program targeting 46 forestry-adjacent communities continued. The third phase of the ban on single-use plastics took effect, prohibiting single-use plastic bags not exceeding 24 by 24 inches and drinking straws attached to juice boxes or pouches. And a deposit refund scheme for plastic bottles was launched. If we think, act and do things differently, we are already on our way to a renewed Jamaica. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade wishes to advise the public that on Wednesday, January 19, office hours for consular and other services will be from 12 noon to 2 p.m. This is to facilitate activities connected to the official opening of the Ministry's new headquarters. Regular hours of operation will resume on Thursday, January 20. The parish of the national hero Paul Bogle has been tapped as the next frontier of tourism on the island. Find out what's in store from Tourism Minister Edwin Barnett. Visions of a coffee trail and a bath butterfly farm are among a decade-long plan to lure tourists to the parish of St. Thomas. It's being considered as the Pearl of the East. Tapped for its rich culture and unspoiled natural beauty, St. Thomas is forecast as the next tourism frontier. Realizing its potential, the Ministry of Tourism has embarked on an initiative to develop the parish. The study has been done, the documents are before us, the St. Thomas Destination the Development and plan Management Plan has been completed and will be unveiled within this fiscal year. The plan has identified 51 projects for implementation over the decade to 2030, of which 40 projects will be led by the Ministry of Tourism. It involves so many moving parts that have to, to come together. Um, and it's a, it's a multi-sectoral um, mm -hmm. approach. It's, it's, in other words, it's all hands on deck. The destination assessment of St. Thomas identified that the parish has numerous attractions and places suitable for development of tourist accommodation of various types, which should appeal to a wide cross-section of prospective visitors. 23 priority initiatives have been identified for development. Among these are the Morant Bay Historic District Project. This will involve restoring the historic buildings and monuments in Morant Bay Square in honor of national heroes Paul Bogle and George William Gordon. Further east in the parish, the ministry will seek to establish the Para Eco Resort Village and Golf Course to feature a marina, super yacht facilities, horseback riding and other amenities. To ensure that these projects come to fruition, Priority Initiative 23 is to attract investors and implementation partners. The ministry is targeting local and foreign investments to develop infrastructure, tourism attractions and experiences in St. Thomas. It's close proximity to Kingston and especially to the Norman Mann International Airport suggests that the considerable tourism development is possible there, which will serve as a catalyst for the wider social and economic development of the parish. 
The plan speaks to all sectors in the parish benefiting from tourism, providing economic viability in communities beyond Jamaica's traditional resort areas. We want to introduce our visitors to more community tourism experiences. This increased variety of experience will give the visitor the feeling of having a multi-destination vacation without ever leaving our shores. Our new marketing packages will encourage our visitors to take excursion to local shopping establishments, restaurants, entertainment facilities and bars. We will also encourage them to wander along our beaches, rivers or local fishing villages. Critical in fact in our shift to increase awareness of our community tourism offering will be a targeted campaign focused on our many cultural and heritage assets. We know that St. Thomas will take some time as we grow. We have to deal with um, zoning there. We have to deal with a lot of um, uh, environmental issues that we'll have to, 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 to settle. Um, there's infrastructure that needs to be developed. Um, you know, water to be dis developed in the areas, electricity, and then to, to look at product development in a big way. Hotels to be built, you know, villas, parks, gardens, uh, and then to really develop the, in my mind, the signature product for the parish, the bath fountain. Resetting the Jamaican tourism, we'll identify and establish innovative policies, systems, protocols, and standards that assure our visitors a safe, secure, and seamless experience while building out a new national tourism model based on a diversified portfolio of unique and authentic attractions and activities which draw heavily on the Jamaica's natural and cultural assets. On Wednesday, we'll be reviewing 2021 in the Ministry of Transport and Mining. So in preparation for those achievements, we look at the evolution of the bauxite mining industry. Bauxite has been a stallion in the economic development of Jamaica from 1952, when the country made its first shipment of the product. Pulled from the womb of our earth, labeled as the rich red soil, though closely resembling a burnt orange or reddish brown color based on how your eyes see it. This precious mineral is conceived with the continuous fulfilled hope of bringing money, major investments, manpower, and however you put it, massive rewards to our island. Bauxite is the, the ore from which the metal aluminum is extracted. Uh, aluminum is a very, very important metal worldwide uh, because of the lightweight and the fact that it doesn't corrode as easily as iron. The first shipment of bauxite was out of Ocho Rios by Reynolds Jamaica Mines in 1952. A year later, Kaiser also began exporting bauxite out of Port Kaiser in St. Elizabeth and a number of other companies followed after that. Alcan um, set up their refinery at Kirkvine and were shipping bauxite out of Port Esquivel in 19, by 1954. Then the, the Alcoa plant at Halsall and the, the last refinery to be built was Nain, Alpart um, refinery at Nain. It was the beginning of the viable mining of the ore and history tells us how its development filled the coffers of our small island home, or did it? Jamaica has been an important player in the bauxite industry since the 1950s. We were actually originally the, the largest producer. The important role of bauxite in our economy is the revenue that the, the country has earned over the years from the bauxite industry. Provide employment. We upgrade the work skills of our, our people so that we, we now have a lot of skilled workers in the bauxite industry. And there's a trickle-down effect on the economy 
because the more employment there is, the more spending power people have. In the 70s, the, the government began to play a more active role in the bauxite industry. So they began to acquire um, a piece of the action for, for the, the nation's benefit. And, and a levy was imposed in 1974 from which we benefited um, financially from production of bauxite. The, the government began to buy shares into some of these companies. Even though they were not the managing partners, we began to acquire a piece of the action for ourselves. The, the levy just allowed us to have a bigger piece of the pie. And while the production of the mineral was still booming, by 1974 the country had taken a small step back to become the second largest producer of bauxite in the world, just behind Australia. So Australia overtook us just by virtue of scale. It's a huge country with a lot of reserves and good quality reserves, easy to mine. In terms of production, we are ranked sixth in the world now behind Australia, China, Brazil, India and Guinea. So our production is in the region of about 10 million tons um, per year and we are comparing to Australia that's producing in excess of 80 million tons. We have some challenges that they don't, that these other countries don't have. For example, we are always mining in populate, populated areas. So our industry has to always be mindful of the local communities and find ways to work with them in order to continue producing bauxite. But despite that, the commercial mining of bauxite continues to be one of the most important contributors to the economic development of Jamaica, accounting for about 10% of gross domestic product, GDP. In addition to that, the industry represents one of the largest gross earners of foreign exchange for Jamaica. As long as human beings require resources, they will try to extract it wherever they can. Uh, the consumption of aluminium is going up, so I see as long as we have reserves available here, I expect that mining will continue. For at least the next 30 to 40 years, we should have enough reserves to continue at our present capacity. Twenty twenty one was a year that represented great things for the Ministry of Transport and Mining, with several of its outlined targets being achieved. The trains will be ready to rock and roll, and it is the beginning of the revival of the Jamaica Railway. It is the first time for such a long time, Captain, that so much activity is going on in general aviation. The mining sector remains buoyant, resilient, and strong in the midst of this pandemic. Join us on Wednesday, January 19, when we'll have those stories and more coming out of the Ministry of Transport and Mining for 2021. That's all the time we have left here on the station. Be sure to join us again tomorrow when we review the activities of 2021 in another ministry. Missed past episodes? Watch at your leisure on our YouTube channel. We're also available on all the major social media platforms as well as our mobile app that's smartphone compatible. On behalf of the entire team here at the GIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.